I'm glad you're here today. This very last, this is our last class period. We have no more classes this semester. There's just, there's just finishing up, which is what we're gonna do. So um, let's, let's get going. Ah. Yeah, so this is uh, today's agenda. I want to look at the final schedule. And then I want to talk about the second part of the essay, introduce the final reflection, and um, give you time to ask me questions about what you're working on. So this week's assignments, uh, let me take a look at, you're just going to read the module pages on drafting, I've got a page on MLA formatting, just as a reminder, since that's 10% of your final grade. And you'll read the feedback on your first draft and reflect on what you're gonna do next. That's due tonight. I think most of you have already done it, those of you who are here. And tomorrow night, you're gonna complete, you're gonna submit your complete essay to Canvas for peer review and peer review in Canvas. I don't even know what that means, but that's due tomorrow. And you're gonna read two students' papers, give them feedback, that's due Saturday. And you reflect on your work, the Reflection Direction Journal, the last one of those this entire semester. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but last week's was worth 10 points and this is worth 10 points. I needed to, um, yeah, I needed to get all of the thousand points in and I thought, well, I don't wanna give extra assignments. Let's just make the assignments we have worth more. Um, next week is just submit your final essay by Wednesday, December 9, and your course reflection essay by Wednesday, December 9. Um, Normally, I have a pretty big window that I'll take essays late. This window is smaller because I have to read and give um, final grades. And so the link is open through the 10th. If anything comes up, there's an emergency, talk to me immediately. If I can extend the deadline, I definitely will. I know. I know we are living through a global pandemic. And so I've tried to be as flexible as possible and, and um, but we do have to finish. So communication is key here. So finishing the essay, uh, you're, you've got the final, the final, final everything. You've written your introduction. Most of you wrote a paragraph introducing or describing what you're going to do, you know, like with the questions that you're going to ask, who's behind the article, and um, what is their purpose. Um, and then, you know, like, what are the evidence and the claims they reflect, you know, like they support. And so you've identified the questions, you've introduced the concept of lateral reading. And so you had a paragraph on that, and you also wrote the paragraph about who's behind the source and um, what their purpose was. Now you want to start analyzing the validity of the evidence in the article. So you're looking at where did the evidence come from and what claim does it support? What do other sources say about the claim? And are those sources reliable? So you've looked at it a little bit more in depth. Any questions, things that you want me to address as I um, start looking at um, my sample essay to talk about what I did? Have any of you started reading, um, started writing the last part of the essay? Ezekiel, have you encountered any challenges? 
um, things that you want me to talk about? Um, yeah, um, I had like two. So one of them was that I had tried to use for my evidence chart the most like trustworthy sources that I could find out there. So before I had submitted them to the evidence chart, I had asked Google, are these sources credible? Went through media bias check and then saw many sources were saying credible, a lot of sources. But the thing is, is that I don't know how I would explain that because for example, I use CDC for my essay as one of the sources and I'm finding it very difficult to evaluate CDC because a lot of sources such as the news who you know, we use as credible, they, use, they source them into their work. Like Science Magazine, they'll source you know, CDC into their work. So I'm not really sure how I would evaluate the CDC because well, I'm you, finding, you know, Oh. Um, no, I, I'm, oh, the sorry. CDC is a government organization, and mm -hmm. so you can say it's a government organization, it's run by scientists who challenge each other, and um, so, you know, like, describe what the CDC is. So if I okay. were to Google, um, let me do that. What is the CDC? Because if you understand what it is, then I think that that helps you. So here okay. is the CDCs about um, what they are. You can see that. And um, I think that is helpful. But you can also go to Wikipedia and ask what is CDC and find out a little bit more about it. And its main goal is to protect public health and they focus on national attention. Um, that's their entire goal. And you can find out, you know, like how were they established? And so I think a few short sentences about what they do and how they, how they gather their evidence shows that they are um, generally apolitical. And I think that would help you. Okay, thanks. Does that um, does that fully answer your question? Yes, it does. Thanks. Um, I have one more. Yeah. Um, with the with the evidence chart, because I remember asking if we needed to include that. But I wanted to show my process with you know how how um, how I evaluated everything. Mm -hmm. Do I need to include each of those questions in my essay just to show those are the questions I ask myself? Well, those questions are modified. You, you're not the only one who asked that question. So okay. I'm glad you're asking it again. Um, those questions are modified from the questions Green asked. Okay. And so I don't know that you need to um, have a, a address each one of those. But the first thing you could say something like the first thing I did is to make sure this, you know, like find out where this evidence came from. Okay. And, you know, like what was the purpose behind that evidence? And I learned that the evidence came from another right wing source or um, came from the CDC. And so, you know, like we're always asking those questions. We're asking those questions of every, um, article we find on the internet, as well as the evidence that's in the article, um, as well as, you know, like any lateral reading sources we're looking at. Over time, you're going to, um, this process gets a lot easier because you're, you'll find, you know, like, I can trust this source, like media bias check. You're mm -hmm. learning, oh, this is, a reliable source or when I look at this article or the CDC or the um, science magazine or scientific American mm -hmm. those are really nicely sourced and so I've okay. learned that I can trust them I still double check but you know like probably less so because you just automatically know okay thanks um, any other questions based on things you're encountering um, related to what 
Ezekiel talked about. So the next thing, um, oh, I shouldn't have done that quite yet. Um, in the slide deck, I linked to the page where um, you had the opportunity to earn extra credit by analyzing my essay. Um, and so I did want to talk about my essay, not the parts that you we've already you've already done, but the parts um, that you're doing now. And that's when I get to my page four. And I transition into the next type of question, which is analyzing the evidence. And so you'll notice that I start with, uh, I start with a transition sentence. Once readers have determined who is behind a source and what their purpose is, and determined whether or not it's trustworthy, Green recommends that readers identify the actual evidence in a source, evaluate whether or not that evidence is trustworthy, and what other people say about that evidence. And so I'm moving into that next stage of my essay. There's other ways you could do that. You could talk about the claims. Um, I eventually get to the claim after I introduce the evidence. And so um, I start out with the evidence, but you can start out with the claim. It doesn't matter which one you do as long as you're really clear about what you're doing. So Martin has multiple data points in her article. And so I talk about that, which it makes it seem like she's really credible. I thought that when I was reading it and I, she had hyperlinks to um, her Media Matters article. And I thought it was kind of lame that she, you know, like only had one, um, one source, but at least it seemed like it was a good source. Uh, unfortunately, she had statistics that didn't come from that. And um, so eventually I do identify the claim, which is that um, the minimum wage, raising the minimum wage will not hurt workers or businesses. And then I talk about she doesn't state where she got her data, but she does link to an article. And so I describe the evidence that she's using and where she presumably got it. I start to evaluate the article itself. And again, I'm guiding my readers and um, I go to the source, Media Matters, and I evaluate Media Matters. And I find that they're very factual. Um, even though they have some biases. And then the next step is to look at what other data says related to whether or not, and this, you'll notice, this is related to the claim. Did Seattle's unemployment rate go down instead of up? And so then I look more closely at Media Matters, and then I realize her statistics are not even in the article. So I started to look at other sites, but I'm focused on, you know, like, is, you know, like, is her evidence legit? And what can I learn about the claim that she makes? Because sometimes I can't find specific things on the evidence. So I need to look at the claim itself and see if I can find evidence related to the claim. I'm doing both of these things in order to make sure I can use Martin as a source or I can cite her or, you know, like if I'm in an argument or a discussion with somebody else on the minimum wage, I can, um, you know, like I want to use credible evidence. I don't want to just make my point and be argumentative. I want to have my facts straight whenever I write or whenever I have a discussion with people. And so I actually find out that, you know, like it's like she made up the facts. 
And so another site that ended up being really good for me was the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And this is a government data website. And so in a way, um, <clears throat> this is like the CDC and I just say what it is and um, sort of like I'm assuming that it's trustworthy, which most people will assume it is. And then I describe the data that I discover and, and then I analyze it and I show that it wasn't effective at all. She distorted the evidence and um, yeah, it erodes the credibility of the entire article because if one piece of evidence that's a strong piece of evidence is false or misleading, it suggests that the entire article is not trustworthy. And I could have ended my essay right there because I knew that it wasn't trustworthy. And that would have taken me to, you know, like just over five pages, which is a good length for this essay. Um, but I decided to keep going because I wanted to analyze an infographic. The articles that you worked on, um, Weiss's article on masks and even the Heartland article on alternative energy, they both had a lot of data charts, which a lot of internet sources do. And so I kept going because I wanted to analyze the infographic. Um, questions about what I did. You'll find that I um, use the same pattern. I identify the evidence and I introduce the claim that that evidence supports. And in this case, the infographic is the evidence. It has statistics on it. And I discuss the claim and I discuss the relevance. It is, the infographic is very relevant because it emphasizes the claim that raising the minimum wage issue is significant and it can change lives. She's showing that it's helping not just teenagers who are earning presumably, you know, like money to go do fun things, um, but it's it improving the lives of people who are supporting families. And so I transition by asking how trustworthy is the evidence? First, it's important to find out who's behind the evidence and what their purpose is. And again, I'm repeating that question because I want to, I want my audience to stay focused on here's my process. And I go to the Economic Policy Institute and I find out who they are. And it turns out they definitely have a, a unique perspective. Um, the EPI is a nonprofit think tank that is focused on improving low and middle income workers. And it's a left-leaning organization. That doesn't mean they're wrong, but it does mean that they might um, leave out in relevant information. I include the, um, I copy pasted the infographic in here because I'm referencing it. And I check them with media bias fact check. And then I start looking at the statistics. And again, I go to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And I realize um, that that tells a different story. And then I start looking at this more closely and um, it realizes, it, it, it begins to, um, if we look at the numbers and not statistics, we realize 
that it's, um, I analyze it here. So, you know, like it was a little bit tricky to do that, but I did it to the best of my ability. I saw in a lot of your charts that that's what you were doing and you actually looked at the chart closely and then you started to find the evidence. Um, any questions about how I walked through the second part of the essay? Again, I analyzed two pieces of evidence and two different claims. You only have to analyze one. Questions? So let me talk briefly about my conclusion because my conclusion is just taking all my evidence as basically saying, based on all my analysis, here's what I now know. And here's why I know it. And I go back to my thesis, whether or not to increase the minimum wage is a complicated issue with many things to consider. But it's clear that Carolina Martin's article is not reliable enough to help readers determine what to do for a variety of reasons. I list the reason she's not an authority, her article is not fact-checked, she did not do extensive research, and she misrepresented the evidence she chose. And then I sum it up. When considering this controversial issue, readers should look elsewhere for data and conclusions. Now, I have my own biases on minimum wage. I have my own perspective. And I, frankly, I wanted her evidence to be I wanted her article to be trustworthy. A, I love it when college students write really good research. And B, I generally think it's, you know, like that the minimum wage should go up from time to time. Um, but her article isn't an article that we should go to if we wanna make an argument. And um, I have no reason to do this research. And so generally, I don't enter into this. Questions about the conclusion and what you're doing? OK, then I have, uh, yes. I have a question about my about the work cited, actually. OK. No, I don't. My Google Docs isn't letting me doing that indentation where how do I do the indentation for the so, sources? So what I did, um, let me get to, um, Esteban, I can help you out with that. On this week's, on this week's module, what? That did not work. I'm a little bit confused. Um, I'm going to have to fix that, but let's go over here. Um, I thought I had the link just right, and I did not. I will fix that momentarily. I just did that this morning. So this, I have a page on MLA formatting modules, and there's a link you'll see for hanging indentation. And here is a video on how to do hanging indent. Have you already watched the video, Esteban? Um, well, I probably haven't, considering okay. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, um, it, I, I have always been able to figure out how to do it from Google Docs. Um, but this had a simpler way. Generally speaking, this is what I do. Let me go to a Google Doc. 
there's my sample essay. And let me just copy paste. A couple of lines. Um, it's not, it's, I've got so many highlights that it's a little bit tough. So let me go to the end and um, if I put my cursor next to author and tab in, it doesn't work. So my cursor needs to be next to author. I hit enter and then I hit tab and it goes in. Um, did you see that? Did that make sense, yes. Esteban? To me, that's so you always- hit enter and tab at the same time? No, not exactly. Um, let me, so I've got, the first line is going to um, be from margin to margin. I put my cursor next to the sec the, at the front of the second line and I hit enter. And now I hit tab. Now I'm gonna put my cursor next to the third line. I hit enter and it goes automatically in. That is my hack. It's essentially the same thing I do for Word, exactly the same. Um, the videos that I posted here have a better way, um, but I will probably keep doing it my old hack just because it's always worked for me. Um, but if you do this one, you'll see how to do the whole thing and, and do it all at once. Um, these are really good videos, and I think that it might be more useful for you. Um, other questions, Esteban? No, that was the only one I had. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it can be really daunting. Um, that's why I included an MLA page is because I wanted to pull everything together into one spot so that you didn't have to go back um, and try and find all the, all the details um, from the other modules in previous weeks. Yeah, this is gonna be the most sources you have for probably any essay you have ever written in your entire life. Any questions about the essay before I move on? So the last thing I wanna talk about is the course reflection essay. And it's every essay has a question that you ask and your thesis is the answer. And um, this one, it's like, who, how have you grown as a writer through your work this semester? And I have a page on Canvas and it has all the information that you need about this and why I have this essay. Um, you can look at this as our final. If we were doing this in a classroom, this would be our final. You would come into the classroom and I would have requested to use one of the computer labs so that you could type it, or I would ask you to write it out by hand. And you would have the full two hours to do that and so um, that's basically how I see this. I'm gonna be your primary audience. You're writing to me. And if it helps you, you can write this as an essay. You can write, dear Mrs. Flewelling or dear Aaron, um, 
you know, like think about, you know me pretty well because you've seen me every single week. You've read my words, you've read my comments on your paper. And so you know the things I value. So write to me as an audience, what do I value? I love details. I love analysis where you explain yourself. And I also value honesty. Um, when you're not sure of something, I really appreciate that. Um, your organization, you know, like whether, um, whether or not you format this as a letter or an essay, you do need an introduction. And it's gonna provide some background information about who you are as a writer at the beginning of the semester. And it indicates the direction of the essay. Some of you started the semester and you were really nervous. Um, you were nervous because you don't like writing classes. You were nervous because you were taking a writing class online and you'd never done that before. You were really nervous because you didn't feel like you were a good writer. You'll all have a different story. That's what goes into your introduction. And you need a minimum of four body paragraphs that illustrate your progress as a writer with examples and analysis. So you could start out with, you know, like maybe a discussion board assignment or a concept of they say, I say, and how that was enlightening to you or what you learned from E. Shelley Reed. You know, like you can, or, you know, like focusing on an essay like the one you're finishing up. And then you have a conclusion that ties your discussion together and shows what you've learned and describes areas where you still need development. This is one English class. And at the end of a single 16 week English class, you know, like you don't learn everything that you're ever gonna learn about writing. And so, you know, like awareness of areas where you want to continue to develop is also important. And so I want you to close with that. This is gonna be about 750 words, lots and lots of details. And um, 750 words is about three pages, double spaced. It is due on Wednesday. So if you want, um, you can quote from me, Shelley Reed, you can quote from John Green, um, you can quote from Graf and Birkenstein, that's they say, I say, or even things I've written on Canvas. If that helps you say, I learned this thing about, I learned this thing about writing from reading they say, I say, and here's how I practiced it and got better. Um, you do need to reference your own work. Um, and you do not need to create a citation page. So even if you're citing E. Shelley Reed, you're quoting her, you do not need to create a work cited page. Questions about any of that? Yeah, Ezekiel. Um. Oh, do we have to just focus on one specific assignment or can we go to multiple things that we've learned throughout the semester? I think it might be really useful to go to multiple things you've learned over the semester. Okay, thanks. Um, some of you might focus on a single assignment because you learned a lot of things just from that assignment. Um, especially if it was one of our essays, you might've learned how to integrate quotations. You might've learned to show and not tell. You might have learned, you know, like how to build a thesis. You might have learned a lot from one assignment, but I imagine that you learned a lot from some of the early discussion boards, um, from revision, from, you know, like even some of you have learned a lot from peer review. So, um, you know, like you get to choose. I, I gave a few organizational patterns for you. Obviously, the introduction is, is pretty straightforward, um, but there are many ways that you can organize your body paragraphs. And so I gave 
yes. Many ways to organize your body paragraphs. Um, you could identify ways you overcame the challenges that you introduced in your introduction, some of your concerns. Um, you could organize it chronologically. Um, you know, like I started with this assignment and here's what I learned from this assignment. And then we did this other assignment and I learned this. Um, Yeah, you could, you could organize, you know, like any way you want, really. And then I've got, of course, you've got a conclusion. Um, evaluate your own improvement. What did you learn? Um, how did you apply what you learned? Even to maybe you could talk about how you've applied it to other classes. I know some of you are using the lateral reading strategies when you're finding sources for um, research papers. You're asking for different classes. Um, some of you are using MLA formatting or the citation pages. Um, edit carefully. That's not part of the grading rubric, but you want your ideas to be clear. Um, and yes, there is a grading rubric. Um, what's most important? Um, developing clear main points, showing and not just telling, and guiding readers. Um, I put the grading rubric um, where it says printable prompt and grading rubric. And so you can, um, so you can see um, this is how, um, here's all the things I grade. It's really small here. I think you can zoom it um, to read it. And this is how I grade it. Um, knowing how I'm grading something will help you. So I'm looking at your introduction that's worth um, 10 out of the 50 points, so 20%. I'm looking at how well do you develop your ideas, and then how do you organize your paper? And those are both, both worth um, 40%. Any questions about this essay? Okay, so that's that's pretty much everything that I have for this morning. It's it's short of a sort. It's a, it is. It's not sort of a short morning. It is a short morning. Um, it's really hard to believe that we're done um, or almost done. Um, we don't have any more scheduled classes, but I am available by email. Um, a lot of you, I know Lori and Leslie and Ezekiel have asked me questions by email. Normally I get back to you pretty quickly um, the same day. Sometimes it's the next day. Um, I'll be on and off my email this weekend, although I try to take some time off on the weekend. Um, but I know that you're finishing up your essays. I've really enjoyed you having you in the classes. I, um, I appreciate the questions that you ask. I see the progress in your work. And um, thank you for being such a great class. Final comments, things that um, you have questions about before we close out this meeting. Okay, Ezekiel. Um, I had a quick question regarding the um, the last, you know, the first the first essay that we had to do evaluating those articles. I'm I already had used two sources to to kind of evaluate the Federalist and what they have been known to do, but I didn't write what their purpose was for promoting this or for publishing this article. Um, what Weiss, you know, what his purpose is and who, and, um, and like what, you know, like more background on him. I did write though, like from his, his bio, 
that he's not he doesn't have an authority over the you know over writing about masks mm -hmm. so do i need to include two more sources that evaluate the purpose of why they are producing the article well okay so that's three sources you went to wikipedia mm -hmm. and then you went to two sources on the federalist yes and on, yeah. and you went to weiss so that's four i think from this from wikipedia and from the sources on the federalist i think you'll find that the purpose of the federalist okay if you look at those sources because you actually have to read those sources and i know that you did mm -hmm. um read them a little more closely and i think you'll see that their purpose um did any of the rest of you find what the purpose of the federalist is or Weiss or what their purpose appears to be? I, I felt like their purpose appeared to be supporting um, conservative ideas and that their purpose mm -hmm appeared to be affirming um alter you know like subverting or um proving false the mainstream media okay their purpose is to be an alternative to the mainstream media and present data that contradicts scientific data from more credible sources. That's okay. what I saw. And I saw that from looking at their headlines, their toast, their article titles, um, as well as their distortion of some of the facts, even including Fauci in there seemed to be less about showing that masks don't work than about highlighting the hypocrisy of the officials. So sort of eroding the credibility of Fauci okay. rather than anything related to masks. Yeah. Which, you know, like it's not relevant, but mm -hmm. you know, like it shows their tone and their attitude. So that's that's how I read it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Other other questions? Honestly, when I was reading the introductions, um, I thought, you know, like, um, sometimes I gave suggestions on how you could improve your introductions. But overwhelmingly, I was really happy with how you introduced, here's what people are saying about masks and masking, you know, like, here was the pro and here was the con. And and then you showed how Weiss came in and how his argument fit into the controversy. And that was such an amazing illustration of everything that Graf and Birkenstein talked about in They Say, I Say. And I thought that most of the introductions I saw were really, really good. Some of them were excellent. and. Um, I was really, really pleased with the introductions. And um, you know, like I had suggestions for the next parts, but it, this is the, one of the best research papers you know, like that students have done for a 115 class that I've ever seen. So really great work, um, really great inclusion of the things that we were learning from John Green um, from Graf and Birkenstein, from E. Shelley Reed. I think that you guys are doing a really good job. So any final questions before we end the class? Okay, that's all I've got. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And seriously, have a great holiday.